Hey guys, welcome to Cyber Platter. This is a full course on Microsoft Sentinel. You are now on chapter 5. We will discuss the threat detection and mitigation workflow in Sentinel. If you have missed any previous chapters, you can find the links and the full playlist in the description below. This chapter, that is the workflow chapter, serves as the foundation for upcoming topics. We will go over all the key components of threat detection and mitigation in Microsoft Sentinel. And in the following chapters, we will discuss all of these components individually in more depth. The first component is data connectors. We have already covered data connectors in detail back in chapter 3. If you need a refresher, you can find the link to the video in the description box. So to quickly recap, data connectors are responsible for ingesting logs from various sources like for example Azure, AWS, GCP, Office 365, firewalls, endpoint security solutions, other security solutions, third-party services and on-premise systems. This is the first step in the Microsoft Sentinel workflow, ensuring that raw security data is continuously collected and fed into the system for further processing. So previously, as we discussed, data connectors had a dedicated section in Sentinel. Now they are integrated under the Content Hub, which centralizes connectors, analytic rules, workbooks and hunting queries in one place. And this update is to simplify deployment, management and discovery of new connectors. Once you have the raw logs from data connectors, the next step is to parse them. What are parsers? Parsers transform raw ingested logs into a structured format for analysis and threat detection. They help normalize, extract and enrich security data to make it usable in analytics rules, hunting queries and incident response. How parsers work? First, receive logs from data connectors that is in the raw format and then extract and standardize fields like for example timestamps, IP addresses and user activity. Then format the data to align with Microsoft Sentinel's analytics engine. Then store parse data in log analytics, making it accessible for analytics rules to detect threats, hunting queries for proactive investigation and workbooks and dashboards for visualization. There are different types of parsers in Sentinel. The first one is KQL parsers, that is Custo Query Language Parsers. As the name suggests, it is written in KQL. Next one is normalization parsers. These transform logs into standard schemas. For example, advanced security information model, ASM. And then we also have custom parsers. This allow organizations to define their own data transformation rules. Why parsers are important? Because they improve threat detection accuracy. That is, they ensure rules analyze correctly formatted data. They also help with faster investigations. That is, security analysts can query structured logs efficiently. And parsers align logs from different sources into a common schema for better correlation. So after parsers, the next step is analytics rules. So data connectors and then parsers and then analytics rules. Analytics rules are the queries that are written in KQL language that continuously scan ingested log data for suspicious activities or anomalies. When certain conditions or thresholds are met, these rules trigger alerts to signal potential threats. So analytic rules convert past log data into meaningful alerts. You can customize analytics rules to fit specific threat scenarios or compliance requirements. Next alerts. Like I mentioned, whenever an analytics rules conditions are met, like for example, say repeated failed logins or anomalous network traffic, an alert is generated. Alerts are individual events indicating something suspicious or malicious might be happening. So these provide initial visibility into potential threats. And then these alerts often serve as building blocks for incidents. 
Next, hunting queries. So, analytic rules automatically generate threats, right? Hunting queries are manually executed by security analysts to uncover threats that might not yet have a defined rule. So, these help in proactive threat hunting. Analysts use KQL to look for anomalies or patterns across large data sets to proactively discover advanced or hidden threats. Findings from hunting queries can also be escalated or converted into incidents if a threat is discovered. Next, watch lists. Watch lists are usually used to store known indicators of compromise IOCs such as malicious IPs, domains or user accounts. Sentinel automatically checks new events against these watch lists. If there's a match, it can raise an alert or flag it for investigation. When watch list items appear in logs, right, they can quickly generate or enhance existing incidents. They help prioritize alerts by correlating them with known malicious indicators. So hence, they reduce a lot of noise. Next, incidents. This is the central point of investigation. So what Sentinel does, it correlates alerts, uh, relevant data from hunting queries or watch lists into incidents. This provides us a holistic view of potentially related threats. Incidents group together multiple alerts or suspicious activities that might be part of the same attack chain. So instead of investigating each alert in isolation, analysts can review an entire incident to see all related alerts, making it easier to see the bigger picture. Incidents are often assigned severity levels to help teams focus on the most critical threats first. Next, manual investigations. So this is human analysis. Security analysts dig into the details of an incident to validate the threat, gather context and decide on remediation steps. Analysts may coordinate with other teams, run additional queries or gather forensic evidence to confirm the scope of the threat. Some complex threats require human expertise to interpret subtle indicators and avoid false positives. Analysts can craft a custom response if the situation is unique or requires careful handling. Next is workbooks. They are used for dashboard and reporting. They create visual representations like for example graphs, charts on tables of incident data, trends and overall security posture. Security teams can tailor workbooks to display the KPIs or metrics most relevant to their organization. So this provides immediate insights into ongoing uh, incidents and detection trends. It's also useful for management or board level reporting as the data is displayed in a more intuitive format. Next, automation rules. Automation rules can tag, assign or prioritize incidents based on predefined criteria. So they help with automatic triage. They also serve as a gateway to run playbooks when certain conditions are met, like for example, high severity incidents. As the volume of alerts grow, automation rules help manage incidents at scale without overwhelming human analysts. They ensure that standard procedures are followed every time a certain type of threat is detected. Next, playbooks. This is the source solution. Playbooks are built on Azure Logic Amps. They define automated workflows that can respond to threats in real time. For example, blocking an IP address, disabling a compromised user account, sending a notification to a Slack or Teams channel, or creating a ticket in a service management platform, like for example, ServiceNow. Playbooks can interact with various internal systems like for example firewalls or endpoint solutions and also external services like for example ticketing, threat intelligence, APIs and so on. These automated responses reduce incident resolution time significantly. Predefined workflows ensure consistent and correct actions minimizing mistakes during high pressure situations. Automation rules and playbooks work together. Automation rules, you can use it for handling the initial triage. For example, you know, the tagging or assigning an incident to somebody or closing an incident if it's a known false positive. 
and playbooks handle the complex or external facing actions like i mentioned blocking an ip disabling an account integrating with ticketing systems then we have notebooks these are often jupiter notebooks they allow deeper forensic analysis machine learning and data correlation beyond standard dashboards analysts can document their workflow in a notebook share it with team members and iterate quickly on queries or scripts so when the investigation requires advanced techniques such as behavioral analysis or machine learning notebooks provide the necessary flexibility and power notebooks maintain a clear step by step record of the investigation which is invaluable for auditing or knowledge sharing so putting it all together analytics rules scan data from data connectors and trigger alerts upon detecting suspicious activities hunting queries and watch lists provide parallel ways to uncover and correlate additional threats alerts and any data from hunting queries or watch lists are grouped into incidents for a holistic investigation from an incident security teams can launch manual investigations use notebooks for deeper analysis or consult workbooks for visual summaries automation rules categorize and manage incidents triggering playbooks that enact automated responses so this is the workflow that has followed in sentinel for threat detection and mitigation i hope this detailed walk through clarifies how each component in the microsoft sentinel workflow fits together starting with data connectors and continuing through alerts incidents and response mechanisms so that's it for today guys i will see you in the next chapter thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like subscribe and share our videos see you soon bye bye